same z's is that too bright behind me or is that all right no because you've got good light in front of you but mine seems to be I need to get like good light and not a dodgy um, background. It's hard. My background look okay? Yeah, you got beautiful plants and everything. I feel like I need to have more plantiness. I'm just dip lolling it on the couch. I really like that painting too. It's one of my favourites. I love it. My housemate, I've actually just fallen in love with this one. She's just, she's got a heat that she's going to throw away. Oh, oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, I was like, no, that reminds me of anything that looks like New Yorkish, Europeish at the moment. I'm like, oh no, that can stay. Yeah, my I've got a lot of this artist called Greg Possle, and he does birds, and I love birds, love birds. So there's some. I've got willy wagtails over there. This one is birds, and their nests are in the rocks, and so but the rocks look like skulls. So it's like new life coming out. It's really cool. Yeah, I love that. Mm. I've got all my artwork and my heirlooms in the shipping container. I was like, oh, I'm not really ready. To, I'll, I'll wait till I have a place. Yeah, well, these were prints from my, my parents had a gallery. So my dad's a furniture maker. And then they had um, art and furniture in the gallery. So my mum did all the art stuff and dad was obviously mm -hmm artist in his own right with wood and um so these prints a lot of these prints are limited edition prints from his painting and they were just left over so i got them framed um yeah yeah but i've had this big one for ages but then i go there was the other heaps of willy wag there's some with willy wag tails hello Hey ladies, how's it going? Great, up from the cold. Awesome. I'm oh, out yeah. here in my sunroom. I'm Ooh, not. It's nice and bright. It is nice and bright, as you would expect a sunroom to be. <laughs> you would hope so, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sharna, like, is your new home on Gold Coast? Yeah, or you check this out. Like, I've got my room. I love cameras. <laughs> so room and then I go straight into an outdoor area which we've just we've just renovated this was full she was a guardian hoarder furniture fixer upper -er. and yeah. we're clearing out the guardian's emotional state and space and she's just like oh, finally <laughs> really oh that's so, so interesting just need some support hey she did. A little bit of loving, a little bit of support, and when they're ready, they're ready to shift. Massively. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yay! I'm so excited we get to do the call. I just noticed my door is open here just to see. There we go. 
All right, the business partnership duo of Sage and Sharna. <laughs> awesome. So, um, the call is really just a conversational chat. I'm just going to ask you guys some questions and probably won't stick to the script and the questions I gave you. We'll just go with the flow and whatever kind of comes up. But the whole gist of it really being about how you first learned about yourself as your health type, what that was like to learn about yourself being an activator or a diplomat, and then how you guys have incorporated that health type information into your business partnership and relationship uh, and how you've really been leveraging each other's strengths in that space, I think would be really powerful for, for people to hear. Does that sound cool? Yeah. Can you hear us okay or do you need us with um, headphones? Uh, if you do have headphones, that would be awesome just to cut out the uh, ambient noise. I'm always aware about that recording noise. Yeah, yeah, good call. I love that dress, Sharna. That's gorgeous. Ah. It's like a kimono style or something. Yeah, it's a total yeah. rack. The total. Oh. oh, and wraps are so flattering for your physique. Well, you know, I only figured this out a couple of years ago, whereas before that, I was always like, no, I can't do that but I have to buy the dresses that are either ridiculously long or short because the middle size one just looks stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I can't buy dresses in Australia because they're all for like females who are like six feet tall and I'm a little shorty. And I'm like, all of these dresses are like, they're dragging on the ground by like a feet. I can't buy any of these dresses. Yeah. Really? I oh. get those shoes. <laughs> See, I love yeah. Vegas for dresses. Vegas. Yes, there's a dress place called The Dress Barn in Vegas, and I can literally walk into that dress shop and pick any dress off any rack in my size, and it's the perfect length, the perfect torso, the perfect shape. Any dress. I've never, ever found a shop that I can do that. Wow. I've never come across that myself. Vegas. Mm, I'll have to keep that in mind next time I'm down there. Good tip. Thank you, Ms. Uh So for filming then, I'm just going to do like an intro straight to the camera and then I will just flick it over to you guys to introduce yourselves and then we'll just jump into the questions from there. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do this. And actually, maybe I'll just ask both of you just to put yourselves on mute just while I do the first intro, just in case there's no recorded flick of the audio. Thanks, ladies. You guys know the drill. You've done this many times before. All right. Hello and welcome to another episode of Lighten Up, where we have honest conversations with real people about our similarities, our differences, and everything in between that makes us human. My name is Katie. I am the community lead here at PH360. I am a guardian health site from Vancouver, Canada, and absolutely delighted that I get to be the host of the Lighten Up series, where we interview amazing members of our personalized health community who have used this health type knowledge to further enhance their lives in every single aspect of living and I am so thrilled that today I am joined by two absolute rock stars in our community. We have the dynamic duo of Sage and Sharna here talking about how they have used this health type information to help themselves build a really successful and integrated business partnership. Now, first of all, I'd love for Sage, if you could please hop on here and tell us your health type and introduce yourself a little bit. Thank you, Katie. Uh, my name is Sage. I am in Perth, Western Australia. I am an exercise scientist and Reiki master, and I am an activator who has the pleasure of working with Shana. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, Sage. Very diplomatic of you to add that in at the end. Thank you very much. And Sharna would love to hear a little bit about you. 
Hey team, I'm Shana and I am in, Bur actually the Gold Coast now and uh, in Queensland and I am a diplomat and I am so excited to be here with these two gorgeous ladies and uh, this activator and guardian, how great. <laughs> Yay, I love it. Now, first of all, to start us off, I would love to hear about your own personal experiences of understanding what the health types are and who you are when it comes to integrating that health type knowledge. So perhaps we'll start with Sage. What was it like when you were sitting in that room that day learning about the activator health type for the first time knowing that you were an activator? What was that like when you were sitting in a room and hearing about the activator for the first time? Um, it was exciting. I, a lot made sense to me. And what I found is, and continue to find as I go through the process, uh, I gain a lot more acceptance of myself, the good and the bad, or what is perceived to be bad, but isn't always bad. So we, a lot of the time, will have misconceptions about our regular biological function because we're not aware that it's a biological function. So as I've become more aware, I've become more accepting, but then also more empowered because I'm able to make adjustments around that and be responsible for all parts of myself. And so what it does is it brings those things that you may not be con conscious of and brings them into your consciousness, both so you're aware of your strengths and you can really, really capitalize them on them, but then also aware of maybe some of your deficits or things you perceive not to be so great and you can take responsibility for those and end up making those work for you as well. So it's been an unfolding of, of a lot of realizations, but I guess initially it was just so many light bulb moments that it's, it's a blur. There's just so much and it still <laughs> happens now. Like there's still times now where I'm like, Oh, okay. I'm doing an activator thing. <laughs> I love it. And what were those key points about an activator that you sat there in the room hearing them? You're like, oh my gosh, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's definitely me. What were those key points that resonated with you the most? Uh, starting things and not finishing them. <laughs> so having really great ideas, jumping into it and then going, oh, that's not a good idea. <laughs> or, or just not having thought about how it's actually going to work because we're quite impulsive and we'll think for, we'll do first, then think. So I was like, oh, that's why I've started so many things and haven't finished them. So that was one thing. And so then what I'm able to do is take responsibility for that, take the judgment away from why I haven't finished so many things and maybe considered how I can uh, employ some of the diplomat tendencies to explore the options before I make the decisions. Um, and then that. that's yeah. like advanced health typing 101. Advanced, awesome. yeah, <laughs> so advanced. <laughs> Basically, winning and being the best at it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> making it a competition. There's the activator. Now we tease the activator out, <laughs> yeah, can't help oh, it. Uh, <laughs> and then also, um just my instinct to move all of the time and to make that the basis. So even with mental health, everything, I instinctually make sure that everything is structured around my movement. So regardless of what else is going on in my life or whatever stress levels I'm under, my exercise just came first because I knew it was a grounding point. It, everything could go from that. So then understanding the mechanisms and, and why it was behind that, it all made sense to me as to why that was my primary go-to was to make sure I was moving and feeling strong through that movement all the time. Oh, fascinating. And thank you for that insight because it actually just gave me clarity on how I can actually jumpstart my exercise routine. Because as a guardian, do not prioritize that. But if I structure my whole life around it, then I kind of have to do it because I don't have any more excuses anymore. Right. I love that. <laughs> Learning from the activators. Thank you, Sage. It's fascinating. <laughs> now, Sharna, our diplomat, uh, I would love to hear what your personal experience was like when you were sitting in that room that day hearing about the diplomat health type for the first time. What was that experience like for you? <laughs> 
I was laughing as soon as I heard this. So um, as, a, as a chef, as a personal trainer myself, I've got many qualifications. I've started many things in my life too. But I remember sitting in that room and I was like, that's me, that's, that's not me. That's me, that's not me. That's me, that's not me. I'm more like them. I'm like them. I'm like them and them and them. And I remember sitting in a room going, but I'm everything. And I, I think the greatest heart moments for me that really hit home to me was on that weekend was they said, you need to sleep in. And as a personal trainer, guys, like often we're up before the sun training ourselves or attempting to do something for ourselves or training a client who's crazy enough to be awake at that hour. Echoes. And then I'm sitting there going, why do I always feel so anxious and tired? And I'm living on caffeine. I'm living on supplements. My body constantly feels like I'm drawing from my bones and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working for me yet it was working for so many others so that weekend they challenged me to sleep in more and we didn't have to be up early we were there at nine so I was like what is this thing I was like, what and I noticed immediately a bit of a shift in me um but so there was the sleeping time frame the times of which I needed to do the things that really shocked me that were supposed to be good for me um, and then it was understanding that I needed methodical um, balance and that my environment really mattered to me. And I was like, huh, interesting. I've spent most of my life as a gypsy traveling and doing lots of stuff. No wonder being a chef and a personal trainer, right? So I've got the two paradigms of the things that people struggle with the most, the food and the fitness. And so they literally, food came first for me, typical diplomat. And then came the fitness because I developed this addiction to food and flavor and sensuality and touch and smell. So it was really funny how I can now understanding that weekend and, and understanding the diplomat. I was like, no wonder I did those things. And no wonder um, it took me two years of getting into this to really succumb, actually three years, to really succumb to what a diplomat health type should be living like because I constantly was dictated to by society as to what a healthy fitness professional is to what a healthy health professional is to what an athlete is and i was trying to live out all these contradictions rather than actually shedding that away and just being me right and just understanding who i am um and also because i'm having this conversation with the lovely sage on board is that then understanding those opposing me and the fact that sage is an activator she's directly across the, the spectrum for me and on that first weekend I realized and now I also realized that I was living as an activator in a diplomat body so I always said I was a walking contradiction for all the wrong reasons I now realize it was because I was trying to be the activator and not fully embracing the diplomat and now I'm finally doing that the world makes so much more sense Ooh, fascinating <laughs> what makes you like what makes more sense now the fact that i'm slow and steady in the morning and i actually have i've always been a night owl and for years i lived on coffee and stimulants because i would be up until two at one or twelve one in the night my brain being like yes everyone's quiet i can do my stuff and then i'd have to be up at the crack of dawn for all of my clients and for my training and to fit in all the stuff for all the other part of the world and so I was constantly burning the candle at both ends and right. So now I finally sit there and go, actually, I'm not talking to anyone before 8 a.m. I'm not actually going to get out of bed before 7.30, if you're lucky, 8, 8.30. And then I'm going to start my day and it's going to be about me. And then I know that then through the afternoon, I can power on in while all the activators and everybody else is getting tired. I'm actually hitting my peak performance and I'm able to serve the greater good and poor Sage as a business together. She's always getting these late night, like, oh my gosh, this and this and that and that. And then I wake up in the morning to these voice messages from Sage and I'm like, oh gosh, like what? Shh, shh, shh. Quiet voice too early your brain is too loud and so <laughs> and we've managed to marry this this both parts of ourselves into this genius spectrum of understanding what parts of the day and then when we're talking i'll i'll be all excited in the evening and she's i'll go oh that's right sorry it's your non-brain time i'll just put some notes down and we'll talk at that 11 a.m time when we're both on board 
love it. I love the self-awareness and also the awareness of the other and the business partner and how you guys can just use it to just have a laugh and see the lighter side of it, right? And not take it on or take it personally and take on that stress and like, oh, urgency. Okay, got to respond right now. You know how some people might respond now. It's like, ah, oh, Sharna's on another late night creative streak. All right, there she goes. <laughs> Exactly. It. I mean, we've literally had the language now of just being able to go, oh, you're doing your thing. That's cool. That's fine. Yeah, because when I'm doing it early morning, I know that Shana knows I just need to express it and get it off my chest. And I'm having all the light bulb moments early in the morning. So even though I'm expressing it, I know that she'll go, oh, she's just, and accept that, even though it's not her right time to listen to it, she'll accept. So we, we will accept each other, even even if it's not the right time for us. We understand what each other's doing. I love it. Such an advanced level of awareness, you guys. That's so incredible that you were able to, to come together as opposites. Like you say, you sit opposite one another on the, the health type circle there. And so I'm really curious to hear what it was that you found attractive about going into business with someone from the opposite health type. So what was it, Sage, about Sharna that you found really attractive being so different from you, the complete opposite of you, that was really like, oh, okay, yeah, I see this as a strength, actually, even though I don't have it, I see a strength in her. What, what were those aspects that were really attractive to you about going into business with a diplomat? Well, from my perspective, and Sharna, I know will answer this the opposite to me, because she, <laughs> I didn't. I just went, oh, I really like Shana. She's great and she's amazing and she's really smart. Let's do business. That's the, that's the amount that I thought about it. <laughs> and so I really appreciated her, but I, had, I did not consider many options. And so as we've gone deeper into it and actually had to really do some applied work, we've, I've intentionally gone into Shana's profile so I can gain a deeper understanding on how does her mind work? Where are her strengths? We're both pretty headstrong and we're both very determined. But if I'm going into something really determined and Shana pipes up and I know from knowing her profile so well, it's one of her strengths. I'll just go, this is a time where I don't stick to my guns. This is a time where I go, this is actually Shana's strength. No matter how much I think I'm right about it, it's one of her strengths. And I will hand it over to her. And then what happens is, it is one of her strengths. She then compliments exactly what it is that I wanted to do anyway. And so it's as we go along, it's a constantly evolution. It's a, it's a constant evolution of gaining more understanding. We've really had to, just like any relationship, the more we get involved, the more we've had to, we've gained understanding of ourselves and the other person. And we're able to transform and utilize our strengths to benefit ourselves and each other. So it's been a really, really interesting journey, just, even just so far. It's so fascinating. I love it. They, and I'm so curious now to hear Sharna's response. <laughs> After she will have thought about it. it up. <laughs> <laughs> she will have thought about it. And my guess, she would have thought and thought and um, considered options well before I'd even said anything to her. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Sharna? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly, actually, we've, we've, of late uh, and as things were always unfolding in different universes really but always at the same time um we <laughs> so i already had a vision for where i wanted to go in the future and i was just waiting for the right angel to drop in to facilitate certain areas i've always had the hierarchy vision of where the world needs shana to be and i knew uh the end of the middle of last year i had the realization that i i can't do this alone and i don't want to do this alone anymore which is as a diplomat, our main thing is we want to be heard and be a part of the herd. And so um, I was waiting for the right angel to come along. And when Sage and I met on a project, the really amazing thing was that um, Sage, she said the right words and she had this energy and this attitude that I really loved and respected. Obviously, the, the, the activator speaking out and speaking their truth. But because of the lens I had of PH360, I was already knowing 
I was already in the space of connecting and allowing everyone to show up how they needed to. And so when Sage would have her activator outbursts and whatnot, or speaking her truth, which to some might seem like an outburst, I was sitting there going, yes, look at you do this. Look at you being an activator. That is so great. And so then I would sit there, I would sit there and I would go, okay, she's got the knowledge. She has the science. Wow. She loves doing all the written stuff. I hate that. Wow. Sage really loves the nitty gritty of this. I hate that. Hmm. This is a really great opportunity. We really get along quite well. She holds space for me. She hears me. And she also loves all the things that I love, but she likes doing the stuff I don't like doing. <laughs> so, so in my brain, I was like assimilating. There's my angel. She is smart, spunky, well outspoken, which I love because I'm well outspoken. Um, she loves the nitty gritty written and the science. Wow, this marries up really well. And I can see us working. So my brain had already assimilated the project we've just started, uh, the project we've just finished, the project we're starting and the next three projects going on. And I was like, Sage is like the gift from the universe that fits into all the aspects of the, the perfect person that I want to work with. And then as she's ticking off the boxes of like where my brain had created future projects and possibilities, it just made total sense to me and it was comfort. So um, in knowing that saying similar to what Sage was saying before, I know when Sage is talking to me, I hear the tonality and I feel the energy of her words and her, her, her presence with me. And quite often I've gone, but have you, have you trained today or have you trained yet? Or have you eaten? So I know through the language that she is and the, the energy that she's holding as to whether or not she needs something else because I know she's an activator. And same with me, she'll do the same. So I love that I knew what I needed because I was already thinking of every other move. So when she came in, I was like, you are the perfect fit and I'm willing to invest my energy because I feel like I will get, and this is, it might sound selfish, but this is a requirement of a diplomat. I knew that if I invested my energy in Sage, the return would match what I was putting in. An interesting thing here, right? I was the one who took action and said, why don't we work together? Yeah. Oh, interesting. So the idea came from you. Well, yeah, sure no idea. There. yeah, so that's where we go. Activated diplomat. She may or may not have brought up the idea to me, but I didn't even think. I just said it when I thought it. And I was the, I took action on it and she would have already, even now sometimes, she's thought of the plan way bigger than, and then, but the good thing is when she tells me, because I know my brain likes to know the plan because it's a little bit ectomorphic, likes to know that what, everything I'm doing has a purpose. So she tells me the bigger plan and then I feel better to take action on it because I understand it's going to have a purpose to doing it. Mm. Otherwise, I can get a little bit hesitant and not take action like an activator likes to. But then I look in her profile and I know that's one of her really big skills and gifts. And so then I'm taking action, which she loves, because then she's like, oh, Sage is certain of the action. So then I can be certain too. Mm. So fascinating. You know, it sounds like you guys already have it all figured out. You've already ironed out all the wrinkles, you know, perfectly, seamlessly how to interact with one another. And of course, we really want to know the nitty gritty details. Like, could you give us some specific examples maybe of some of those learning curves that you both had to go through as you were navigating and how this was all really going to work? Do you have any examples you could share with us? We've been pretty good. Like there's, there's little minor things. Um, Shana doesn't like being told what to do and nor do I. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Love it. And things like Shana will, and I can even sense she might trigger even as I say it, uh, task completion times can be a bit of an issue. And so if we're talking about something, she go, oh yeah, we can do that in two weeks. And I'll go, oh, let's maybe, because I know she won't like being told what to do. I'm like, maybe we could consider going two to four weeks. Mm. So then I'm not telling her what to do, but I'm giving her that out. So if it gets to two weeks and it's not done, the stress doesn't start to pressure of time, doesn't start to impede on her. So mm -hmm. that's one of the, even just the learning to deliver the information, we just kind of fine tune it. 
And I think the other thing, because we know that I was stuck inside of an activator behaviour for so long, it's been the ability to have Sage help me come out of that. Um, there's been times where Sage will call me on the fact that I'm behaving like an activator and pull me back into um, being more of a diplomat and understanding that it takes more of the time. So it's, it's great having an activator with me because it reminds me when I'm being too much activator and to step back into myself as a diplomat rather than keep trying to be all the things, keep trying to be the activator as well. It's great because then I get to actually surrender back into knowing that I have the plan and that she can take the action. Yeah, that's been a major one. This Also the stubbornness of the diplomat. I just kind of, because we essentially coach each other through lots of processes. I really acknowledge the stubbornness of the um, diplomat, but I, st I don't relent. <laughs> and so <laughs> it's that real encouragement and holding that space to really encourage Shana, like be a diplomat. The, the, all the conditioning of her life to think it's lazy to have these biological way that she works is lazy or it's not the way that society she thinks she should be behaving to really honor the diplomat and the more and more she does that and i'm no different i've really got to honor the activator to take action and to actually do things mm. um that everything then starts to just go into flow and it seems so much more effortless so that's been it's still work in progress to just really honor who we are mm. Love it. That's so fascinating. Now, I would love to hear from both of you uh, your perspective on what natural gifts and talents do you feel each of the different health types brings to a business partnership? So, for example, let's say that there is an activator out there who's looking to engage with a diplomat or find someone who is really good at specific tasks. I'd love to hear from Sage what you feel are the natural genius and talent that a diplomat brings to the table of a business relationship. So not speaking necessarily about Sharna specifically, but in general as diplomats, mm -hmm. what type of natural genius and talent do you see them bringing as such a massive strength to the business table? Their ability to see that what small steps you're taking now will influence the bigger picture because they've already seen the bigger picture and are able to tell what we do now, how it's going to influence that bigger picture. That's massive because I won't even, I, I just don't even understand. <laughs> um, <laughs> and also even just the, the, diplomats diplomacy in dealing with things so a lot of the time when you're navigating your way through things I might and Shana no I, I still have learned a lot from the being so reactive and impulsive that it's not always a great thing but it's not even in Shana's nature to be that way so to to take a little bit of a step back if I feel like being reactive because diplomats they they consider everything and everyone. So they've already considered how being reactive could influence the bigger picture. So just that ability to have so much awareness of so many things and understand how what we do now will affect those long-term things is huge. Mm, fascinating. Just that shift in perspective instead of like what's right in front of you right here as an activator, but then it's thinking the long-term planning, bigger picture, expansive scope that the diplomat mind would have is, is such a beautiful compliment to one yeah. another. Yeah. yeah. Fascinating, Sage. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, Charna, what would you say are the activator strengths that you think are so valuable that activators would bring to the business table or to the staff table, you could say? 100%. For, for activators, I like to call them fire starters <laughs> in a good way. They, they see the opportunity and they, they jump at it. They, they go, okay, there's a thing, let's try that. There's a thing, let's try that. And there's no fear they learn by pain, they learn by doing. So they're great at going, oh, let's initiate this thing. And as a diplomat, 
um, who's aware, I can sit there and go, okay, we don't need to initiate everything, but it's a great idea. And they're giving me an opportunity to see past maybe what I had projected. Um, and, and I can then see other possibilities and other ways of doing things rather than the what I had created, but they take action. And that's a big thing for a diplomat. We can quite often get stuck in rumination, thinking of all the moving parts and pieces and get stuck on too many finer details without getting into the action. Um, and in that rumination, quite often they're stuck by an emotional barrier for, for diplomats as well. So, you know, um, motion, uh, emotion in motion is generally the way of processing and getting things moving again and activators are all about motion. So they're a perfect partnership in, in the fact that the, the activator really gets us moving our emotions through motion to get things uh, effectively effectively working but also potentially looking at other outcomes or taking action in outcomes that we may not have done beforehand and then learning that process and learning how that may potentially always it always is a gift um that we don't always see because even though diplomats do see all possibilities we don't see the immediate reactive possibility and and thing that needs to potentially happen now we're potentially sometimes stuck too far in the past or the or, uh, or past or the future <laughs> So true. If you need momentum builders, oh my gosh, activators are the best for it. literally designed to be that spark that, you know, that really gets them going. And the lateral thinking too. I love that about activators, yeah. how they can come up with like a variety of options on the spot. Like, oh, or you could do this, 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 and this, and this right now. And you're like, oh, wow. Yes. Okay. Didn't even think about that, but you're absolutely right. Mm. So fascinating to see them work. That's now awesome. I'm, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, with, for us, with what you've just discussed about knowing the other health types, Sage and I have literally been discussing the last couple of weeks going, we need a third person. And we've actually been able to sit down and go, hmm, we need someone who has the analytical, who's good at organizing, because both of us are terrible at organizing things in like a schedule matter and a, and a methodical. So with this lens, we're now actually able to go, we know who we need and which parts of the health types and which health type elements that we require for our next person to join us in taking us to the next level. Um, because we have this understanding and awareness and, and, and love and appreciation for what each health type can bring to a business. I love it. And that's actually what my next question was going to be <laughs> to, to both of you, of course. And Amorph's on the same page there, the guardian and diplomat <laughs> was... I'd love to know what you see the benefits have been to your business from applying this health type information. So what benefits have you already witnessed from putting this health type lens on and running your business the way that you have? What benefits would you say you've seen so far in doing that? Oh, countless. So first of all, just to have the understanding of each other, this, the complete avoidance of some of the misconceptions that people often have between each other. So an example that comes to mind is quite often I'll say no, because activators will say no. Um, and sometimes Shana will say, oh no, you didn't want to do that. And I'll go, ah, uh, I could change my mind on that. And I know she will say, I know I'm okay to say that. I know I'm not going to appear flaky or indecisive. And I know that she will go, she just did an activator thing. And then when I'm doing it, Shana's like, oh, she just did an activator thing. It's not that she's being any which way. So all the judgment, it's such a safe place to be. Mm -hmm. And so then what that happens is because it's so safe for us to be who we are, then our true genius can really come out because we're not trying to um, worry that the other person's not understanding us. We're not necessarily needing to change ourselves to suit the other person or what we think the other person might need. It gives us so much more freedom to just relax and really be who we are and also to just admit our deficits. Mm. And so it's just made it such a safe place, safe place. So mm. yeah, it's, it's hard to just um, to isolate out anything specific because it's all encompassing love it that can be so powerful for business dynamics especially business partnerships when sometimes you can have that that ego space that's in there when you go into business together and mm -hmm. what you just described sounds like such a like you say a safe space of non-judgment to just allow the other person to be themselves so that they can feel confident uh, enough to feel supported to bring in 
their natural strengths and genius. It's such a paradigm shift for, for some business partnerships. So fascinating. Yeah. yeah, massive. And we both have the potential to be quite confrontational and stubborn, but we know mm-hmm. that about each other as well. So even that understanding of each other and ourselves, we're wary of that being, being something that, that our awareness around it means it's not a problem. I love it. So fascinating. And Sharna, you've already mentioned that you're, you've already gone through the process of understanding the health types and understanding what work tasks need to be taken care of and starting to piece the two together of how you might find someone of a certain health type to satisfy those needs. Is there any other ways that you've seen benefits from applying this health type information to your business at this point? Yeah, I think Sage pretty well touched on an aspect of it. I think um, one of the major things is conflict resolution mm-hmm. and understanding. This is a dynamic. When you're working with other people, conflict resolution is real and it will come up at varying stages. Um, and something that probably enabled us to partner together so well was that we were we were so fortunate in the early days to play witness to that playing out quite well. And uh, I think because of the PH360 lens, we were able to really look at that and and see how we had played out our own um, reactivity in situations and our own strengths and our own weaknesses and everybody involved in the same facet. And because we, we both, we both have, we, we always say we've nerded out on PH360. We've nerded out on this, it's our, it's our being. Um, we were both able to reflect on the entire situation and see the way that the health type was playing out and how it was playing out true to itself and how those involved, some of us were playing out outside of the things that are true to ourself and then be aware of that. And then it meant that we were able to have no less judgment of that situation and understand how to resolve it or where it was no longer resolvable and it had to move on into something else. And that had to, so we know when to close boxes and when to leave them open, right? We know when to walk through that door or not walk through that door. So in business and building an empire or building a construct, it's really, really great to know the the natural formations of the individual and what's not natural and when to be alarmed and when conflict resolution is has a purpose and when it also finally does not. Um, And I think that's really important with businesses that are growing and expanding and employing different health types and different groups. Uh, So fascinating, ladies. Just, I love hearing all the innovative applications of this health type information because just so many benefits seem to come out of it so many times. And as you've just demonstrated and and shared with us, it's so fascinating. Now, uh, let's say, for example, we have some individuals watching this call who are diplomats and activators in a business partnership and they're new to the health type conversation, they're new to personalized health. What would be some of those tips that you would like to give those in a professional business relationship dynamic of how the activator and diplomat can work best together? What would be some of those tips that you would like to provide that dynamic so people can really harness the power of these you know, opposites, attract complementary skill sets that they would find in that partnership? What would some of your tips be to them? I would say really get to know your own profile and your partner's profile really well, particularly the genius sections and the mind section. Get to know those really well see where the potential is for things to not go right and then see where your strengths are, where the other person's strengths are, discuss them. So we have agreements with board up. These are your strengths. I'm going to acknowledge them and vice versa. So you're just having the awareness around it is super important because even though we understand our general, how we're going to be, it's to really get into it and really own it and really encourage each other to really honor that within yourself. So if I've got a strength and I'm doubting it, then Shana can come in and go, this is one of your strengths, back yourself, take action. Mm. So we can really support each other. So that would probably be the main thing, like really get to know yourself and each other, use it, use that, use what you've got right there in front of you. Mm. Oh, actually, yeah, definitely add to that. You may notice that most of the time I let Sage go first. Diplomat and activator connection 
diplomats, you have the capability of holding space and holding the information and waiting for the right time to speak. Activators need to express themselves right then and there. And it's really important for them when they're in a flow state to get that out. And diplomats have got this gap catalog that we can just keep file of everything. Mm -hmm. And so remembering that even though a diplomat may be emotional and wanting to express themselves, it's best, safest and totally doable to allow your activator to speak first because quite often, like I said earlier, they'll have thought of something you may not have and they'll uh, say it in a way that you would not, um, which also then helps the diplomats gain clarity to be able to speak their truth and take their action. So, um, and so, I mean, say you said everything perfectly, but that one's definitely something is always let the activator speak first if you can, um, mm. and then hold your space, assimilate your conversation and speak it forward um, and make sure that you are always um, acknowledging your activator because the activator will naturally do it back to you. If you acknowledge the activator, they will acknowledge you. And that's the beautiful thing of it is um, we as diplomats have the bigger body and the greater capacity. The activator is the now. So give them the now and you have the capacity to hold on and be there for the later and, and, and speak it slower or, or, or pass it on later when it's more relevant. Um, that's yeah. a definite big one in all aspects of the business. Yeah. Cause also we'll forget as well. We'll forget. And so that means, and we won't pay attention. Yeah, so if we haven't, it, and it's not a fault, like it's not <laughs> that I'm not consciously not paying attention, but if I'm trying to remember what I'm going to say, because I'll get distracted and forget, I won't pay attention to what the other person's saying. So if I get it out and it's expressed and it's out, good, I can now pay attention. I can then consider the other options. So yeah, it, and knowing that Shana knows that and doesn't think, oh, it's all about Sage, she has to say what she wants all the time. It's yeah, we just have that. Yeah, that's a big understanding that's important. Mm -hmm. And lists. <clears throat> and then the other thing would be diplomats, write your schedule, write your day, get clear on what you need and where it needs to go, then communicate that. And the activators will always fit in where they can. Like there's a beautiful simulation when the, when the diplomat knows what where the, the ship is sailing and how long it's going to take for that ship to set sail, the activators are jet ski and they will jump in and around your waves and create their magic around what you need to do, but the diplomat must know their must know their trajectory throughout each day. Oh, that reminds me of something. <laughs> Shana and I got our chrono wheels, and we're like, when are we best? When am I high functioning? When are you high functioning? And I'm in Perth, obviously she's on the Gold Coast, so there's a time difference. And we worked out when is our optimal time to have meetings about things that are important. Both of our brains are switched on. Mm. And so we coordinate our times love it oh my gosh how productive is that yeah. and have you noticed a, like a difference when you do meet at that oh, yeah. time versus other times yeah oh yeah we try meeting the afternoon and say it is like <laughs> so, yeah. but then like like last night I was up too late and I created a list of things and I know Sage has probably already jumped on and, and done a bunch of stuff already this morning. So in the evening, I will set my lists and my tasks and set priorities and conversations for us and then she'll get up before I've gotten up and she's doing the, her part yeah. of everything. So it, it, once you have to understand that, you know how the day and the flow integrates between the two of you. That's beautiful, you guys. Now, we've been really focusing on understanding the health types and how that's really helped and benefited your business and yourself as business people who have come together for a business partnership. Now, I'd love for us just to hear briefly your personal advantages that you have found to your own personal well-being because you have applied this health type information to the business in a way that's been very effective. It sounds like things are really sinking and in flow and you guys are really leveraging each other's strengths. What does that mean to your personal life and your personal health and your personal stress levels, would you say? How does your personal life benefit from applying this health type information to your professional career at this point? Sage? Um, in, in every way possible. And it's actually really interesting. We've been reflecting on this a little bit over the week. Genius is last on my list of, of my list of priorities. It's last, but it is really important to me. So being low down on the, my priorities does not mean it is less important. It is very important to me. What it highlights to me is the importance, especially of having the t first three priorities working for me. 
So exercise was a no brainer. I recently improved my nutrition to help with my brain function, to help with my focus, which will then help with my work. One of the hardest ones recently has been social because I'm a little bit introverted. I fall on the introverted half of the circle. So what we discussed was how often that third priority is a bit more of a challenge for us. So I've really acknowledged that and gone, okay, with Shana supporting me because that's what she does best on and how to use the social because what happens with the activators socially if they connect with people who are within their field, field of work is it gets you inspired, uh, a bit competitive in a really fun way. And so what it's done is by entering into more of a social, more social relationships with peers who, I, who are in the field of work that I am has amplified my work. And then I feel really accepted and it's such a great feeling to have like comrades and everyone, obviously, obviously PH is such a safe, loving, accepting environment, but that feeling has then helped me to take action in my work. So with genius actually being the last one on my list, it means all the other good things get to filter down through my whole life in order for that to work for me because it's important for me. Oh, love that perspective. And that's so true. That's a big point that you made at the beginning there about genius being the bottom of your priority list, but a priority for you. Mm. That's so true. And it's not about, you know, your personal preference when it comes to the health type priority list. But it's so fascinating to see that when everything else falls into place, then you actually have the capacity and the clarity to be able to identify, ooh, but this is really important to me, so I need to make sure that I do that. But yeah. all of this needs to be in place for me to actually recognize and understand, oh, it works really important to me and I get so much out of it. That's yeah. so fascinating. Yeah, it is. And even going through the process, so much of this process just recently, I've gone, oh, wow, like more and more, more and more, wow, 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 and how much everything just amplifies everything else. And it's actually going through the process that's made me realize that more and more. Absolutely. And then focusing on your social life. And then all of a sudden you've got this boost in business contacts and your business network is through the roof when that wasn't your original intention. But again, everything just falls into place when you're going at it with such a, a clear, clear mind and clear body with the health being in check. That's mm. so cool. Oh, I love it, Sage. Thank you for sharing. That's really fascinating. Sharna, over to you. Whew, okay. Um, for me personally, it was place and i think i'm going to mention it because we're all in it right now COVID 19 has actually been a gift to me as a diplomat because i spent my whole life trying to be a chameleon and live up to expectations and obligations of society that i can now fully surrender to and see they weren't serving me and the diplomat flow is about this long game and it's about um our first priority is our place our environment and our second priority is our genius, which is our workflow. And so all of my life, I was trying to live up to expectations of all these different scenarios. And it's not until now, I've actually been able to surrender all of those roles or jobs that I thought I needed for security. And I can actually now, I'm finally in an environment. And so Sage and I have got a whole bunch of work we're trying to do right now, but I've just moved into a new house and helped my friend renovate the house and clean it out but also i now have a place for all of my stuff all of my boxes are unpacking and having their cute little place and i i know within my being as much as everyone might think that that's fluffing or dilly daddling um is that when i do that i know through this weekend and beginning of next week it's sage is going to be like whoa let's slow down <laughs> because i need to get my environment my place correct and once I do that, my genius then flows. So right now there's been this whole like, ah, that then, oh, oh, like constant competition between my environment and my genius flow. Fitness is my third priority. So fitness has always been my hierarchy because of my own life journey with um, fitness world, eating disorders, all that sort of stuff. To now see that that was my third priority, not my first my environment was my hierarchy and then my genius flows from that so we're super excited i'm super excited because right <laughs> now is the first time in 33 years 32 years that um i can actually fully embrace who i am and and be in flow and and, and see what flow actually looks like 
so it's a really exciting time now because I will now be able to wake up when it's best required. I'll now be able to do a morning ritual that is in perfect flow. I now have a place for all of my things and I can beautify my space. I now have um, the clarity for my creative self to fully express because everything in my environment is perfect. And then as someone I alluded to before, being um, someone who has uh, had a, a life of eating disorder, eating, I'm going to say that, eating disorders, um, a life of that, we're really intrigued to see the full diplomat um, encompassing of that behaviour because we're hoping that drops away. So right now, you guys have set a challenge for us to live out our PH60 completely, and that's why I'm actually fully in that space is because now I can finally do that, and we're really interested to see how that plays out with mindset, eating, um, genius flow like you can see how when you get to understand all of this as an individual let alone as a business it becomes so exciting to see what's actually possible and what your flow really looks like oh my gosh Sharna I don't know about you Sage but I'm sitting here like <laughs> close to tears right now at seeing the joy and the inspiration and the flow that Sharna is just exuding yeah. right now yeah Oh. I'm, yeah, I'm very, very excited. I'm also like, there's more creative Shana to come. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. <laughs> it's only the beginning. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like the, um, what is it when a star reaches the end of its life? But I'm in it's the wrong context, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, a, it's a new life. So yeah, it's a new way of being. So yeah, that still makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Sharna. So, so what does this health type information and these health type priorities then mean for your personal life? Would you say, how do you encompass that in like a couple of sentences? I digress. Um, it means flow and it means, uh, I think for a diplomat, it means power and flow in balance. Like it, it means that I finally get to be okay within myself. I'm an Amazonian. I'm a big body. And instead of judging who I am, physiologically I now am able to fully embrace all of that and and just come from love like rather than judgment like I always wanted to be an activator physically mentally emotionally and now it's actually fully coming back into myself and appreciating every aspect of me seeing every aspect of me and just being ready to stand up and really radiate that and that for me has actually been my lifelong desire mm. My, don't let's do that or you make me cry. Uh, <laughs> just holding it together. Um, All of us. Oh, I love so it. For me as a diplomat, it's, it's finally being out. Of, and I think a lot of diplomats will resonate with this. We, we spend our lives trying to be all of the things and to finally come back and shed away those layers of the onion or the ogre, because that kind of fits too, um, is just to fall in love fall in love with ourself, fall in love with our creative flow and fall in love with the life and, and know that we're here to support others when we support ourselves first. Absolutely. And what I love hearing from both of you actually on this call is just this sense of confidence to be yourself, not only in your professional networks and in your business, but also in your personal networks and the relationship that you have as friends. And it's just, it's so exciting to see this lack of a mask, you know, that so many of us go into the workplace and we have, and we have to put on this mask and this is who we are and, you know, being very serious and we have to play this role and be who we want to be. And with this health type information, it really just helps us take that mask off and throw it aside. And we get to be who we are in our personal life and we get to be who we are in our professional life. And there, there isn't that division anymore. It's just Sharna and whatever Sharna's doing that day is Sharna's life. <laughs> it's not this big division between work and you know living. It's like, nope, this is just life and this is what you're doing. And you don't have to put on these different hats and play these different roles anymore. You just get to, to be you and live your best life however you want to live it. I'm mm -hmm. so excited for a day that business has that capacity, you know, that we don't have to put those masks on anymore. I think it's exciting for society. We get to look at the fact that we're now moving into a world where we come from our truth and our contribution to the world and to each other finally becomes real. Um, 
rather than everyone trying to be and do all of the things, we actually finally get to stand inside of our vessel, inside of our genius and contribute to society in all aspects from that space. Like the world is, 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 is so in, in, in such a great space right now. Mm, absolutely. Times are a changing. Yeah. I love it. So thank you so much, Sharna and Sage for sharing your time with us and your genius and your insights. It's been a fascinating conversation truly to dive deep into the relationship that you two share and to really unpack all of the benefits that you've been able to experience from applying the health type lens not only to yourselves but also to your business and to your staff members and also to your personal life and how it really just comes together as not being divided between work and personal life that this is just life and this is who we are and how exciting is it when you just get to be yourself and work on your passion and just be on purpose. It's a really exciting times. And I was absolutely moved by both of you sharing your stories. It's so cool to see both of you just absolutely inflow and being in yourselves. So thank you both so much for joining us here today. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you both and thank you for joining us here on this lighten up webisode we hope you're feeling a little bit more enlightened to the ways of the diplomat and activator working relationship dynamic as we put the spotlight on these beautiful examples of activator sage and diplomat sharna here today who really shared with us a little sneak peek into their business relationship dynamic so thank you so much for joining us on on this webisode and we cannot wait to see you on the next one. Take care everyone. Yay! Yay. Awesome, 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 awesome. <laughs> oh, you guys nailed it. Seriously, I was so close to tears, Char, and I was like, I gotta hold it together. Oh my gosh, I can't. I'm getting like so moved by her inspiration right now. Yeah, it's been a big process. Age went, oh, and I was like, <gasps> <laughs> oh, it's been so beautiful to witness Shana really being a diplomat. Like when she's being relaxed in the morning, like the other yesterday we had a call, she's in her pajamas. I'm like, 